Welcome back, everyone. Glad you could join me here today. Episode 2272 of the Cabral Concept. We are going to be in for hopefully a great one here today going over what's the difference between insecticides, pesticides, herbicides, and all the different ides that are sprayed on your food. Should you be worried about them? And we'll be able to differentiate by the end of the show. But I also want to go over, and I love do, doing this every single year. I've been doing it now for, I think, four or five years. We're going to go over the Environmental Working Group's 2022 Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 list. That means if you're not going to buy organic, which foods are acceptable to eat that are not heavily sprayed and which ones absolutely do always need to be eaten organic or just pass completely on them due to the level of pesticides sprayed. So let's dive into the show. Again, I will list them for you. You'll get the links right over at 2272 of the Cabral Concept. So you can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2272 and follow right along. All right, let's get started. So first things first, every single year, Without fail, every time I do the show and I talk about the dangers of pesticides, someone always says, well, when you're talking about Roundup and these are the things that are sprayed on crops like the Dirty Dozen here, like glyphosate, it's actually an herbicide and you should be calling it an herbicide. To that, I say, okay, I understand. However, let's break down actually what pesticide, insecticide, rodenticide, bactericide, all the other fungicides are, right? So let's go through that. And then by the end, you can say, is it okay to call it a pesticide or not, right? So let's go through that, all right? So I just want to clear the air. And then you'll also know what's being sprayed on your food. So basically, you know, if you're doing organic-based farming, you are not spraying these things, at least the chemical compounds you might be doing, like, for example, in our garden, our small garden in Maine, we'll use a uh, vinegar-based spray to kill weeds. Vinegar is a great one. It works really, really well. Uh, we will use neem mixtures. Like, there's all sorts of different things you can spray. I'll use uh, diatomaceous earth on uh, fungus and, and all sorts of great things. And again, they, they work really, really well. However, they're more expensive and just a, a cheaper way to do it. And of course, a patented way is to be able to spray certain pesticides over the crops. And what does that do? Well, it basically eliminates all of the insects. It eliminates uh, weeds and everything else that could potentially harm your crop or stunt its growth. Because remember, if you're watering your crops and there's also weeds, well, what happens is those weeds also take the water. And so it's taken away from your crop. And same with the nutrients from the soil. Although again, if you're doing conventional farming, there's not a whole lot of nutrients in that soil in the first place. And I've done particular podcasts on that. So you know that I'm obviously a proponent of purchasing organic when it comes to produce, fruits, and vegetables, which are produce. Uh, however, I know that it's more expensive. There's no doubt about that. The way that you defray that is to be able to go to local farmer's markets where you can buy direct from the farmer. So for example, let's say that you purchase from Whole Foods. And I don't know, let's say a banana is $1 at Whole Foods. Okay. Uh, the farmer is probably selling that to Whole Foods for like, I don't know, 50 cents or so. And Whole Foods will sell it to you for a dollar. I'm just making that up. I have no idea what a farmer sells a banana to Whole Foods for. But let's say that's about it because it's kind of like that for a lot of other food items. So that means the, the farmer is, let's say, producing the banana at 25 cents. Again, I don't know what they're producing bananas at. But what they're selling to Whole Foods for is 25 cents. So that's what they make on that banana. Now, when you go to a farmer's market, you can oftentimes get the same price that they're selling to Whole Foods or other people for restaurants, etc. So you're oftentimes going to be able to get 30%, 50% off the cost of your fruits and vegetables, and it's locally grown and it's picked ripe. So I cannot recommend enough finding a local farmer's market. If you don't know where a local farmer's market is in your area, I will link up how to find a local farmer's market at 
stevencabral.com forward slash 2272. stevencabral.com forward slash 2272 is today's show. If I said it was a different number before, it's 2272. All right, so let's dive in. What exactly is a pesticide? Well, a pesticide is there to kill some type of pest, all right? So when I have said in the past that Roundup, which is an herbicide, what's an herbicide do? Well, it's a weed killer. It kills weeds, right? So it kills other herbs. Now, there are selective herbicides, which only kill certain type of weeds, which keep now your own plant safe. Uh, We've talked about glyphosate in the past, how glyphosate uh, is just not something you want to consume, right? So glyphosate can cause, potentially, I'd say may cause intestinal permeability, may cause even cancer. And there are lawsuits uh, showing that it did cause cancer in certain people. So again, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not whistleblowing here. We know it's not good. That's the way that it is, but it is legal. And so again, here we are living in a very, very toxic world. So uh, an herbicide we know kills weeds, a rodenticide, rodent, it kills, well, those pesky rodents running around, eating all the crops, right? Then we have insecticides. If we think about it, what would an insecticide do? Okay, an insecticide is going to kill insects from eating all of your different plants. Then there's fungicides. Fungicides are going to kill fungus, so fungal-based growth. There is bactericides. Well, that's going to kill bacteria. Uh, Let's see if we can find another one in here. Uh, Insect repellents fall under that. Antimicrobials, you might call it a microbicide. It's going to kill microbes that are growing, very similar to bacterial-based pathogens. But here's the thing. When we use the term pesticide, it just means pests. And pests actually define weeds, rodents, insects, fungus, etc. So pesticide is simply a catch-all, all right? So I just want to state that out there. So if I call Roundup, which is an herbicide, a pesticide, it's because it falls under the blanket of pesticides. So we have pesticides here, and then we have herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, rodenticides, everything below, all right? So I just wanted to state that. Now, bottom line is this. You basically kill these insects and other things by destroying their nervous systems. It's violent. It's not good. It's not healthy. And the only reason it's approved is because the micro dose that you ingest when you're eating a serving of that fruit or vegetable has not been shown to kill you. Okay, great. Right, right. Like, okay, that's the barometer of what we're dealing with in terms of health. No long-term studies have ever been done What happens to someone over a 30-year time period by consuming pesticides a little bit every day? Well, there's no study on that. What happens with young children that are consuming these pesticides? Very, very young. What happens to them? Their bodies are obviously far more sensitive. Well, again, no good long-term studies there. So my recommendation is this. Try your best not to consume any types of pesticides. That's the goal. So The easiest way, and I know it's a blanket statement, is you're going to do your best to buy organic. And I'm also going to link up a previous podcast I did on learning how to read labels because a lot of times you don't always see the organic sticker or conventional medicine or GMO. Sorry, conventional medicine, conventional farming. But there's a label and they're done by numbers. And so you're always able to look at the number, all right? So I'm going to link that up. I'm going to make sure my team uh, remembers to do that, my amazing team. And so we're going to link up a few. We're going to link up the um, GMO and organic labeling, and we're going to link up uh, a few other shows for you as well, all right? So now let's get into the actual Dirty Dozen from this year. All right, so the dirty dozen, what does that mean? These mean don't eat them. Like when you hear dirty dozen means don't eat them. Literally do not eat these unless you can purchase them organic, all right? So number one, it's been on number one on the list for quite some time, and it keeps like battling back and forth with number two and three, which is spinach and kale. But here we go, strawberries. Strawberries is number one. You might say, why would strawberries be number one? Strawberries are really hard to grow, believe it or not. They're really hard to grow because insects and everything else loves to eat them. They literally love to eat them. And also you need the right amount of sun, the right amount of water to get them to grow, to actually get them to turn that bright red, beautiful color. So strawberries are going to be more expensive organic. But honestly, 
either buy the strawberries organic or pass on them and go with a different berry. You might say, but I love strawberries and I just can't afford to buy them organic. I totally understand. It is not worth it, in my opinion, to eat that amount of pesticide. It's just not. It is short-term flavor savoring versus long-term consequences, in my opinion. All right, so we don't want that. Here's a nice way, though. You might say, well, what's the less expensive way? Frozen strawberries. So if you're just using them in your smoothies anyways, buy frozen. Frozen organic strawberries, right? It still has to be organic, even if it's frozen, but then you know they're picked ripe, and, uh, and you get them for a little bit cheaper of a price. That goes for all of these. You can always purchase frozen. And I have a podcast on frozen versus fresh uh, versus... Uh, I forget the other one, maybe dried. And, um, and there's podcasts on the different micronutrients, enzymes, et cetera, that uh, get lost or gained when you cook. So it's going to be frozen, fresh, cooked is another podcast that we'll link up. All right. So number two on the dirty dozen mean don't eat it. If it can't get it organic, that is spinach. Number two, spinach. Don't eat it if you cannot get it organic. Now, why are these kind of coming in? Like all of these you'll see. Um, on the top of this list, it's because you literally cannot wash the pesticide off. All right. I have a do it yourself home uh, cleaning solution for produce. We'll link that podcast up as well. Uh, DIY uh, cleaner. So we'll link that up for fruit produce cleaner. But the problem with strawberries, spinach, and the next one, kale, collards, and mustard greens, is that the pesticide actually seeps into the skin, into the flesh. It cannot be washed off. I want to repeat that. You cannot wash off the pesticides from all of this dirty dozen. All right? And that's part of the reason why they're on the dirty dozen. Number four is nectarines. I don't know if you're eating a lot of nectarines out there. We don't eat a lot of nectarines in my family, probably because we don't have great access to them, especially locally. But nectarines can be delicious. Soft skin can seep right in there. All right. It also means that they're heavily sprayed. Apples are up there. I mean, it is so difficult to find an organic apple orchard. We only have one around us that is not heavily sprayed. So organic apples, yes. Non-organic apples, No, or if you have to get them, peel the skin. Even though the skin is where all those antioxidants are, uh, you you just do, again, I just can't recommend eating that level of pesticides because of the potential danger. It certainly outweighs that benefit. The next one is grapes. This goes with wine as well. I mean, it's really difficult. I know that when you're drinking wine, you're not necessarily consuming the skin, skin, but in a way you are, right? Because The skin is what gives you the red for the red wine, and then without, obviously, more the white wine. You know, but it's it's a tough one as well. Grapes are just so heavily sprayed. They really are. And again, I can't recommend it unless you're going organic. All right. And but again, the nice thing is if you're getting a European based wine, there's typically less, it's less spray. They don't have the same, they have much more, I should say, precautions taken in Europe. All right, number seven is bell and hot peppers for 2022. Again, soft skin seeps right in there, bell and hot peppers. Number eight is cherries. Cherries are one of my favorite fruits during that, what is it, peak month of like end of July, August. You can get the organic Mount Rainier cherries and all sorts of just great, great dark tart cherries. Uh, Absolutely amazing. Good for, well, good for all sorts of things. Good for gout, good for... uh, and oh, great for so many different things inside the body. Great antioxidants. All right, peaches, there they are, just like nectarines, not wildly dissimilar. We have peaches, and peaches, again, super soft skin. There's no way you are washing off those pesticides. Number 10 is pears. For everyone out there that loves themselves, a good pear, just like apples, it is on the list. Celery, how many people do we have? You know, not us, but how many people in the world are now doing some celery juice, right? Well, be careful because if you're juicing celery and it's not organic, you are juicing pesticides right into your cup every single morning. And I cannot recommend that. Not for gut health, not for the nervous system, not for your immune system or any other. The last one in the dirty dozen is tomatoes. Tomatoes are on that dirty dozen, rounding it out. And let's see, do I have last year's? I do. And last year's was very, very close, almost exactly the same. And uh, 
like bell and hot peppers got moved around a little bit. That's it. So again, these are the perennial uh, most terrible, and we want to stay away from them, all right? So now let's go over the Clean 15. The Clean 15 is a little different. It means that if you can't find these ones organic or you want to save a little bit of money, then you would buy these ones non-organic or conventional. Again, I recommend organic, not because the macronutrients change, the protein, fat, or carbs that people love to point to. It's the same. Well, it's not the same. Because if you look at the micronutrients, typically if you're going with a good farm, there's more actual nutrients in the soil as well. Plus, there isn't all of those harmful pesticides on there. All right. So, clean 15. Number one is avocados. Avocados. And sweet corn is number two. And pineapple is number three. And onions are number four. Why? Like, why are these at the top of the list? Easy. Even if they are sprayed, you peel away the skin and it's not able to seep in. If you've ever shucked corn, which maybe you have, right? I mean, you're, you're pulling away a lot of the outside of that corn before you ever get to the actual corn itself, right? What do they call it, the husk? You're pulling a whole lot of that away before you get there, right? So again, it's it's not easy for insects get, to get in, uh, easy to pull away. Avocados, not too many people are eating the skin. I, I can't recommend that. Uh, pineapples, you're not eating the outside. That would be a little bit uh, sharp inside your mouth. And then onions, you're not eating the outside as well. But again, we're talking about things that are also growing under the ground. So when we look at onions, uh, and when we look at the pineapple, sweet corn, avocados, all of those, again, can be purchased non-organic if you choose to. Papaya is another one. We're peeling that skin off the papaya. Sweet frozen peas. It's an interesting one. Um, the, the sweet peas is, a, is an interesting one to me. Again, you are, you are taking out the outside of the pea. Um, or the, the pea pod itself. So you couldn't, you wouldn't eat the pod, but the peas inside, you'd be okay. Asparagus. Yeah. Asparagus is a good one. Less sprayed for sure. So we're looking at asparagus as another honeydew melon. Another good example. You're peeling away that skin kiwis. Now kiwis are different because some people do eat the skin of the kiwi. I think it's a bit of uh, an acquired taste and you're getting used to it. There's not a whole lot of taste. It's a bit of an acquired texture, I would say. I've tried it before because I know people do eat the skin of the kiwi. I'm just not a, an eat the skin of the kiwi kind of guy, so I peel it either way, but it's a soft skin. It's just not a heavily sprayed uh, fruit. And then we have cabbage. Luckily, not a heavily sprayed one because you are eating that cabbage outside itself. Mushrooms are not a heavily sprayed Cantaloupes, you're peeling the skin. That's number 12. Mangoes, again, peeling the skin. That's number 13. Watermelon, hopefully you're not eating the skin of the watermelon. That's number 14. And sweet potatoes, you can eat the skin. But again, we're looking, at least to my knowledge, when I've grown potatoes, uh, they're growing out of the ground. They're sprouting up. So when we look at these, these are all perfectly acceptable to save some money and purchase non-organic if you're looking to save a little bit of cash. If you can, again, always try to purchase all organic. Support organic farmers whenever possible. Try to buy them locally at a local farmer's market. That was the other podcast or link I was going to give you. So local uh, farmer's markets. And this is the new 2020 Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 food list. I'm happy to link these up for you. Uh, we did see just a couple changes with those uh, Clean 15 as well, like eggplants are no longer on the Clean 15. So there's a couple switches here and there. Broccoli are no longer on the Clean 15. So broccoli, you do want to get uh, organic if you can. It's a little further down on the list, but again, I would still go with organic as well. Uh, much as possible. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create a list for you from the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15, and we will link it up today at episode 2272. Hopefully today's show was helpful. And of course, if it was, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. 